day one, we identified and plug leaks in every corner of the bureaucracy. We overhauled our budgeting process, pursuing zero-based budgeting. This requires government to review every single line item in the budget to see which ones are efficient and which ones have shown to be extremely inefficient or not even performing any function of the road and hence needed to be scrapped. We also now practice what we call bottom-up budgeting through which we harness the wisdom of local communities through extensive consultations. We put our budget online, we can be reviewed and scrutinized by all, and we require our local government units to follow suit. The result has been a budgeting system that ensures every peso of taxpayer money contributes to the national good. Of course, these initiatives are only one part of the equation. Nurturing a government that works primarily for the people can only happen when there is a guarantee of justice. And public servants who place their own interests above that of the people will be held accountable. In this regard, our administration has spared no one. Now, my predecessor in the presidency is under hospital arrest facing charges of plunder. Senators, once deemed untouchable, are also facing cases after the alleged involvement in the scam of massive proportions. Perhaps I should explain that in our country, in our system, we only have sitting at any one time 24 senators who are elected nationwide. This is normally considered a stepping stone in the presidency. Our Congress has to move from office to impeachment. Chief Justice, who in his statement of assets, liabilities in that word, excuse me, declared only 2% of his assets, thus violating the very constitution that he swore to uphold. Beyond these high profile targets, we have also filed 784 cases against smugglers, tax evaders, history. And we have likewise climbed several measures of global competitiveness, most prominently that of the World Economic Forum, where we jumped from the 85th spot in 2010 to 47 in 2015. In just a few years' time, we have shed the title of Sick Man of Asia and have been referred to as Asia's Pride Spot, Asia's Rising Target, Tiger, sorry, and Asia's New Diamond, among others. All this we have achieved through the initiative of our people, who have affirmed our collective belief in democratic principles. Our progress naturally has supported us greater capacity to look outward and to take a closer look at our role in the global community. More and more, the Philippines sees itself in a better position to make a contribution. And amongst uh, the provisions I will refer to is Section 5, which states that all parties will refrain from actions that will aggravate uh, tensions. And I'll be paraphrasing, but that's the gist of uh, the stipulation. And, and again, agreed upon and entered into my own. Now, in 2002, they tried to come up with the code of conduct that would be binding on every party. They failed to do so, and in view of the code of conduct, that was the declaration of conduct statement of our general principles, with the promise of coming up with the code of conduct at some point in time. The Philippines, for its part, in 2012, in a meeting with China by Asia, reminded everybody that that was the 10th year, uh, and there was yet to have uh, occurred uh, any meeting with regards to the formulation of the of conduct. So, Basically, again, as I stated earlier, uh, we have tried to work with ASEAN and we have had some progress in, it, in asking China to adhere to that document that they entered uh, willingly and freely with ASEAN in 2002. The second plan is, of course, arbitration. And at the end of the day, we are hoping that, again, everybody's duties are made clear, everybody's obligations and entitlements are made clear and we remove uh, the content, the atmosphere of contenting theories as to how each party should be behaving in this particular body of water, which is a very important body of water for the world. At least 40% of world commerce traverses this particular body of water. So uh, this acts uh, the reclamation or turning into islands of features that the large of you were just that features, rocks that were submerged, etc. That's not um, add to stability in the region. Uh, after having built these islands between some people to say that later on we might have uh, the right of self-determination uh, as to whom do they want to do uh, flights in the area of these new islands. Uh, of course, when you test people, the test flights, eventually there will be a need to control the flights coming in and out. And who actually gave them, or any entity, 
uh, the right to suddenly say that this particular area should be is suddenly ours. So we invite, we we have been uh, pushing this since, if I remember correctly, our very first things that my predecessors have been pressing this, but uh, tensions have been heightened from uh, I think it was 2012, and then there was another incident, probably relevant one. I'll have to check on the second one. But the first incident had to be with a feature called the Riba, which is 80 nautical miles from uh, a province of the Philippines called Palawan. Therefore, we are within 200 miles exclusive economic zone as mandated by the United Nations Convention on the Sea. The, the entity that was given the service contract was a challenge and shoot away by uh, uh, agents of uh, the People's Republic of China, uh, as a Coast Guard ship at that point in time. During the first uh, attempted uh, satellite launch by North Korea, portion of, uh, of that um, delivery vehicle would fall on the Philippine waters. And we sent the flagship of the Philippine Navy to monitor as to whether or not there would be danger uh, once this uh, particular stage of that rocket would fall on the waters of the eastern coast. It was traversing our western coast where it chanced up a, a Chinese fisherman in a, in a feature called the Scarborough Shore, which we call Mount Masino, which is 120 nautical miles from the coastline of uh, Masino, Sambales. Sambales is a province in central Luzon. Uh, the main of the um, and we are allowed to host people who are fishing in an exclusive long zone without uh, permission again, as I understand it, based on what was. They were challenged by again, agents of the People's Republic of China who interfered with the local arrest of these fishermen who actually had uh, uh, quite significant catches on at least two of the eight vessels. Uh, to include endangered species that, unfortunately, both the Philippines and China had signed an agreement called the uh, Convention of International Trafficking, <coughs> the National Trafficking of Endangered Sea Species or CITES. So uh, we didn't really, we, we tried not to escalate the situation. We have not made a particular point of stating that, you know, uh, there seems to be a violation of Oculus, and it also seems to be a violation of CITES. We have kept that quiet up to this point in time, primarily to try and come to a reasonable agreement. They have, they have changed, so we say, um, the rules of the road, and unilaterally at that. And uh, so this division of fishing ground of ours, uh, some of our fishermen have alleged that in inclement weather, there is a natural show, which is uh, the safe harbor. Uh, to the inclement uh, weather, at certain times they were prevented from entering the shore, which is again 120 miles from our shore, which is clearly within the 200 mile exclusive economic zone. So we cannot let the situation persist. Uh, some of caution to be patient, uh, be even more patient than job. And we're saying that uh, in, um, in a situation where uh, it is very fluid, there might be uh, incidents that uh, can be triggered by the uh, lack of clarity as the rules and to are our conduct. So we've been pushing for the proof of conduct, we've done the arbitrary <coughs> and we're hoping that uh, reason comes to forefront. We keep telling all parties, our country is interested in any government, our government is interested in improving the lot of our people. Now, prosperity cannot happen in instability. So we are asking for cooperation and promoting stability as a necessary groundwork or as a necessary base for prosperity to, to happen for all our respective peoples. So we did point out as a last point, in 2011, uh, Philippine companies had invested something between two and a half million dollars in China's economy. China invested 600 million dollars in the Philippine economy. They sent us at that point in time about 200,000 tourists. And at that point in time, they sent us 800,000 tourists. So we said, you have, a, you, know, you have a very good situation, no matter how you look at it. So, and uh, they responded in 2011 by saying, our disputes in this part of the should not be the be all and end all of our relationship. Unfortunately, um, when they stopped, for instance, the importation of our bananas, part of the reason was that in this dispute, the only tension actually that does exist is primarily because of our differing um, views as to who is entitled to what.
in this particular currency. And perhaps uh, given enough time and uh, sensibilities to the Asian concept of losing face, perhaps uh, we can get them to be more reasonable in their actions towards the smaller countries around the periphery of the South China Sea Western. To a rules-based regional and international order that upholds and protects the rights and privileges of all states. A shared commitment to a peaceful resolution of disputes, including full respect for legal and diplomatic processes, without resorting to the threat or use of force in accordance with the universally recognized principles of international and the 1982 United Nations Convention on Democracy. Shared commitment to maintain peace, security, and stability in the region, ensuring maritime security and safety, including the rights of freedom of navigation and overflight and other lawful uses of the sea and unimpeded lawful maritime commerce as described in the 1982 UN Convention on the Sea as well as non-militarization and self-restraint in the conduct of activities. Uh, point 14 uh, talks about shared commitment to strengthen people-to-people -people connectivity through programs that engage ASEAN and American citizens, particularly young people, and, and that promote opportunities for all our peoples, particularly the most vulnerable, to fulfill the vision of a single ASEAN community. Instead of defining it uh, based on sexes, we really should stick to the basic idea that human rights are rights for all and have to be practiced all the time. And that um, instead of differentiating each other, perhaps we really should be maximizing the observance of everybody's rights.